The nation of the Philippines has been classified as a newly industrialized country. This is a term that describes a country that is outpacing a developed nation's economic growth. And on the current list, only about 10 countries are known to be newly industrialized, most of which reside in Southeast Asia, namely Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and the Philippines. These four countries have been regarded to be the successive economic risers within the coming decade. But there is a vast disparity between the Philippines and its neighboring countries. Unlike the three mentioned, and even if we include Vietnam on the table, the Philippines lacks quite a bit of economic similarities between the four. Indonesia is known for being abundant in natural resources, which helps push its economy after exporting billions of dollars worth of goods. Vietnam was successful in transforming its economy by developing and exporting electronic goods and textile products. Malaysia stands amongst the most prominent manufacturers of semiconductors, photovoltaics, and other similar groups in the electronic and electrical industry. Finally, Thailand has stood to become a rising star in the automotive sector, known for becoming one of the world's largest manufacturers, producing as many as 2 million vehicles annually. Yet, the Philippines has nothing in common with these countries. It is not an abundant source of natural resources, albeit the only few that it found had seen massive regulations. While it does indeed have an electronic industry that produces tens of billions of dollars every year compared to these other countries, the Philippines are lagging behind. This is why the export industry of the Philippines is far lower than its neighboring countries. The country just registered somewhere around $100 billion worth. At the same time, most of these big four have doubled or even tripled around $200 to $300 billion worth of annual exports. This small export sector has led to numerous and continuous problems, such as having a significant trade deficit. Furthermore, amongst these big five nations of Southeast Asia, the Philippines has become the lowest recipient of intra-regional foreign direct investments. However, while these have all downplayed the growth of the Philippine economy, the archipelago nation still stands as one of the fastest growing around this entire newly industrialized group. From 2013 to 2021, the average growth of the Philippine economy stood at around 4.7%, which is higher than the Big Five of Southeast Asia and only behind Vietnam, which had 5.8%. Moreover, it is even, in fact, projected to report a big gross domestic product growth by the end of 2022, which will prolong until 2023. Then, the question arises, how did the Philippines grow as fast, or even faster, than its neighboring bloc? Well, the drivers of the economy of the Philippines lie in many factors. Some can attribute to its tourism economy, while others may believe it is still a robust agriculture-based nation. Or, we could also pinpoint the fact that the Philippines, while it's electronic and electrical sector operates in low-value operations, it is still a considerable benefactor to the economy as it generates billions of dollars in annual revenue. And finally, we could also attribute it to the overall overseas Filipino community, which has generated hundreds of billions of dollars for the country for decades now. These foreign-based investments and remittances have helped push the country's fiscal status to increase due to the growth of international reserves and, in turn, also help ease the deficit within the country's balance of payments. However, amongst these said factors, there is one more underlying industry that we have yet to talk about, one that we believe stands out from the rest. It is known as its service economy. The service industry of the Philippines is the single largest driver of the entire economy. While that may sound weird since most nations around the world and even in Southeast Asia also have their service industry to be the largest, the Philippines, however, stands out when it comes to service exports. The service industry, along with its exports, is the largest in the entire country when it comes to providing job opportunities and salaries. This is mainly due to the country's well-known business process outsourcing industry, one that is projected to generate over 38.9 billion US dollars by the end of 2022, according to the IT and Business Process Association of the Philippines, a figure which accounts for close to 10% of the total gross domestic product of the country. Business process outsourcing has been hailed as the world's largest within the contact center category, topping even India, which is known to be the world's largest when it comes to service outsourcing. Although the contact center may be the most profound so far, it does not mean that it is the only service export the country has. Emerging industries such as healthcare, animation, and game development have become its next destination for massive growth. 
This fast-growing, high-value service category has so far become the quote-unquote future industries of the overall outsourcing industry of the Philippines. These two are projected to have double-digit growth rates, whereas contact centers only have a single digit. While its service exports may indeed be a nearly $40 billion sector, it is still not enough to power the entire $400 billion or more economy of the Philippines. Nevertheless, the effects of its service exports over the past decades and in the coming future are extraordinarily strong. If it was not for this industry, where would the nation be? Where would the largest investments, both domestically and internationally, pour into? Moving on, aside from its significant economic drivers, we answered the question, what is stopping the Philippines from operating in similar industries as its neighboring countries? Well, unlike the big Southeast Asian family, the Philippines has a strict foreign and domestic policy. Foreign investments are very much limited, which is because of the government's adherence to the policy as directed by its own constitution. Further, the abundance of natural resources that the Philippines has is even constantly being attacked every time it is brought up. Environmental groups opposed to mining have poured in money and time to stop the degradation of the country's environment. These and a lot more issues are plaguing the country's own economic growth. Had regulations been less strict, it would be more than likely that the Philippines would have positioned itself far better than most Southeast Asian nations if it could grow to where it is today even without the need for foreign interference and a mix of heavy economic policies. How high would the Philippines' economy be if these were not the issues? Would the Philippines be a far more prosperous country with more investments? Would the Philippines have a better and more reliable high-value electronic industry? Or could it have been more successful in developing its natural abundance? The Philippines is currently sitting on a ton of potential, from nickel to cobalt to billions of dollars worth of goods. The West Philippine Sea has even become a battleground internationally because of its potential for oil and gas. Moreover, we have noted across some of our videos the need for competition within the domestic market. One of the issues in the Philippines is that there are too many monopolistic companies operating on local grounds. The nation's quote-unquote miracle unicorn startup Gcash is a $2 billion business and is basically the life of the financial technology system of the Philippines. Yet, who owns this business? It is not from newly emerging entrepreneurs, it hails from Ayala Corporation and Globe Telecommunications, two corporations who are best known for being too big in the country. However, while these issues are limiting growth, we have slowly seen a rapid change as of late. The relaxation of the Telecommunications Foreign Investment Act immediately saw the entrance of foreign firms. US-based Starlink, famous for being owned by Elon Musk, the richest man on the planet, has gone to the Philippines to offer its satellite internet services, one that is also seen as the first in Southeast Asia. This may suggest that the opening of foreign investment policies is genuinely going to reshape the entire archipelago nation. While the telecommunication industry's relaxation has been one of the best changes in the country because it showed that the Philippines has finally opened its doors, there are still a lot more opportunities that could occur had the government adopted less strict policies and favored improving the entire economy by finding profit. Finally, another factor that we have yet to indicate is the country's demographics. Unlike most Southeast Asia, the Philippines has a massive opportunity when it comes to its population. Data from the CIA, which published a report in 2020, saw that the Philippines has the lowest median age in the entire Southeast Asian bloc at only 24.6 years old. Far lower than Thailand at 37.7, Vietnam at 30.5 years, Indonesia at 30.2, and Malaysia at 28.5. This just means that the population is going to be a critical factor in the future. This is also why the government has placed a huge emphasis on education when it comes to the government budget. This puts the Philippines, again, in a unique position compared to the rest of Southeast Asia. It could also suggest that through its relaxation of strict policies, they are now trying to transform the entire country. With the right education and the right goals, the Philippines could easily enter and become a far faster growing economy it would be able to leverage what it can in the coming decades. But anyway, what do you think?